Hello everybody, it's your boy Dane Reads, and today I am starting my November reading wrap-up. Dane Reads. So I've just got the one book to wrap up for you, which is The Secret of Crickley Hall by James Herbert. So I think I've actually watched a TV series based on this, but I didn't remember it. I mean, it is kind of a fairly bog-standard haunted house story, but with James Herbert's take on it, you know. 600 odd pages, it took me a fair old while to read through it, but I did enjoy it. Uh, it never felt like slow going or anything like that, so it kept me absorbed from the beginning to the end. And as I say, it's just a pretty good bog-standard uh, haunted house story. I gave it a four out of five. It's probably not quite in my top three James Herberts, but it's probably top five um, and full review coming soon. I made myself ping. All right, guys, just the one book to wrap up for you today. That is uh, The Moonstone by Wilkie Collins. I read this as a buddy read with Charles, Charlie Heathcote, Charles Heathcote, whatever you want to call him. He hates it when people call him Charles, so call him Charlie. <laughs> uh, this is like a classic detective novel. It's actually inspired by the murder at Roadhill House, which is um, what The Suspicions of Mr. Witcher is based on. There's a character in this who is based on Mr. Witcher. Even the uh, murder itself and some of the clues are based on that, that uh, story. It's said to be one of the earliest known examples of like the detective slash crime novel. Uh, I think it predates Sherlock Holmes. I don't know, let's see. Does it say on the copyright page? First published 1868. I think Wilkie Collins was a mate of Charlie Dickens as well, but yeah, uh, good little read. It's it's long and dense. Like um, the version I had was very small print and stuff. Um, so it took a little while to get through, but it was very rewarding as well. I think especially if you're a fan of the crime or cosy detective genre, you should probably read this just to see, you know, where the inspiration came from, from a lot of later novels. Uh, overall, I gave it a 3.5 out of 5, would recommend, and a full review coming soon. Hello, just the one book to wrap up for you today, and that is Tragedy of the Sith Revenge by Ian Dersha. So this is uh, one of the Shakespeare-style Star Wars books. Did enjoy this one. It's probably my favourite of the original three, uh, uh, sorry, the three prequels um, in terms of the movie. So, um, yeah, it was kind of a joy to read this one. And also you've got lots of darkness to it, like the slaughter of the younglings and all that. Yoda speaks in haiku. Um, my air freshener downstairs just made a noise. All in all, did enjoy. I will be doing a review. I didn't tab loads out, but um, pretty strong 3.5 out of 5, I would say. I have three books to wrap up for you today, and they are over here. So the first is Dorothy and the Wizard in Oz by L. Frank Baum. So um, yeah, this is the latest in this. The, this is the latest book I've read in the Wizard of Oz series, which I'm doing a buddy read of with Joel Swagman. This was probably a week four out of five. Um, <laughs> my main gripe, and I say a gripe, it's only a minor thing, but he's not very nice about cats in it. And poor Biggie, Biggie, he's horrible to cats. Where have you got? Oh, he's fucked off. I heard him a minute ago. He was playing with his toy and he's gone. He must have known I was talking about L. Frank Baum. But yeah, there's some great stuff in this. There is like a, uh, a jury slash court scene. Um, there are invisible bears. There's just, a, there's fucking falling into the center of the earth. There's just a lot of mad stuff happening. Um, so yeah, very enjoyable four out of five. Now I'm looking forward to reading the, more of the series. Then we have The New Machiavelli by H.G. Wells. This, I was not a fan of at all. Now granted, I didn't think I was gonna be a fan of going into it, and it's very dense, like an old edition as well, and it's about politics. Um, yeah, let me read this to you. Although H.G. Wells wrote this masterly novel in 1911, it is still a convincing and illuminating exploration of the corridors of power, a study of a man's progress towards the leadership of the nation, and his love for a woman who was not his wife. And as Wells reminds us, this is a scandal no statesman can survive. So basically it's about an old white man shagging some woman and getting into trouble because of it. While politics happen. So yeah, two out of five, I just trudge my way through this over like two months in my bedtime book. I'm glad I ticked it off because I eventually want to read everything that Wells wrote. But if there's more like this, I'm going to struggle. Let's just put it like that. Um, and then I read... Janet H. Swinney, The House with Two Letterboxes. So this is a short story collection. There is a story in this with that as the name, like the, the titular story. And um, yeah, this was sent to me by Isabel Kenyon of Fly on the Wall Poetry Press. Um, and she sends me some real goodies, like the short story collection she gets involved with are actually ones that people should read as opposed to like, well, short story collections are hard for people to publish and they're hard to market and all of that kind of stuff. 
and they're actually coming out with some really nice stuff. Uh, even the stuff, not all of it is published by her. Some of it is just stuff that she reps as PR. If you're wondering about that smoke, I've got some incense going. It's coming right in my fucking eye. Jesus Christ. Um, but yeah, did enjoy. Full review of it coming soon. I don't have a huge amount to say about it, but what uh, you know, what I do have to say is stuff I enjoyed. Um, it's very like northern English, so it's set in the northeast of England, and you'll see that in like bits of dialogue. Let's have a look. And day in noted school. I guess he, that was meant to be Newcastle, right? Because I sounded a bit Newcastle when I said that. I don't know. You're right, pet. Yeah. Oh, someone did say there. Come on, pet. And yeah, there's a story about the Angel of the North. So yeah, it kind of covers different parts of the, of the North, really. The first story in this as well. Jeez, Christ. Slipping the cable. That was it. That was like a... That was a powerhouse of a story, man. That was... That was really good. Uh, in a way, it was almost... Um, I mean, it wasn't far off novella length. And... Yeah, I think it could have even been extended to be a novella. And even though it was kind of a love story, it was the kind of love story that I liked because it was a love story about what happens after the love is gone. And like the dude's beating his wife and he gets his comeuppance. Let's just put it like that. So yeah, um, a weak one, but a four out of five. Did enjoy, would recommend. Full review coming soon, as I say. Okay, everybody, I've got two books to uh, wrap up for you today. The first is Asterix Legionnaire by Argosini and Ea Derzo. So this is... Uh, the latest book in the Asterix series that I've been reading, it's in uh, French. Probably like 3.5 out of 5 for this one. The story wasn't quite as gripping. I mean, it was okay. Um, my cat's about to jump up behind you. Let's see how he does. Oh, you're coming up here. Yes. He's a bit busy. Can you, can you, can you move out of the way, please? You're right in the way of the camera. Um, so yeah, the storyline was alright, basically, basically Asterix and Obelix join like the Roman Foreign Legion, I guess. Um, it was okay, as I say, um, but it was mostly just good to improve my French. The storyline wasn't the best of all the Asterix books I've read so far. 3.5 out of 5. And then I read The Secret of Cold Hill by Peter James, which is a sequel to The House on Cold Hill. It's basically a haunted house story. It was pretty good, it was pretty well written. Um, the downsides to it, there was a twist at the end which I saw coming. And also, it's just one of those where all this weird stuff's happening and it's like clear that the house is haunted. And the couple just keep being like, what's going on? And it's like, it's haunted. Like, it's obvious it's haunted by this point. So much weird stuff has happened. They should have just, you know what I mean? You just, it starts getting kind of irritating. Also about this much of it at the end, which I thought was gonna be storyline, um, is actually just an excerpt to, what's it called? Where is it? Uh, Find Them Dead, which is his new Roy Grace. Uh, Cause he normally writes these crime novels um, and I've read most of them, I've read them out of order. Um, and I will read Find Them Dead at some point. But yeah, it just meant that this, the ending was a bit abrupt. But still overall I did enjoy. I'd probably give it a week four out of five, but I would recommend the Cold Hill books if you're into horror. Um, reminiscent of um, James Herbert, I would say. So yeah, oh, I'm tired. All right guys, just the one book to wrap up for you today and that is Portent by James Herbert. A very timely novel because it's about global warming and so um, with all the cop 26, I want to say it was, the recent climate change um, conference that's happened. It was kind of quite a relevant read in that sense. Um, very like forward thinking as well, because this was written in like 1992 and basically the issues it covers are probably more relevant today because nobody listened to scientists or authors 30 years ago and I guess they still don't. But um, yeah, pretty good. I would say the last, um, the last fifth of it or so it kind of lost itself for me, um, but there's also some great gore scenes which you like, like natural disasters just killing the shit out of people and stuff. Uh, overall, probably a week four out of five, but I did enjoy, and uh, yeah, I'm still loving reading James Herbert and looking forward to reading some more. All right, guys, just the one book to wrap up for you today, and that is Across the River and Into the Trees by Ernest Hemingway. Gave this a pretty solid four out of five. It's kind of got bits of war, bits of romance. It's very Hemingway. Um, but the character work was great in it. There was lots of, um, you know, just really good lines that I enjoyed as well. I mean, you can see here, this is like quite a few tabs just for this part of the book that I'm yet to do uh, my review of. So I would say there's probably been like 40 tabs total or something. So I had a lot I wanted to say about it. I will be doing a full review. Um, I'll go ahead and read you the blurb, why not? Because um, it would do a better job than I kind of explaining what it's actually about. 
So the war is just over. In Venice, a city elaborately and affectionately described, the American colonel, Richard Cantrell, falls passionately in love with Renata, a young Italian countess who has a profile that could break your or anyone else's heart. Cantrell is embittered, war-scarred, and old enough to be Renata's father, but he is overwhelmed by the selflessness and freshness of the love she is offering. But this is no fairy tale. The fighting may be ended, but the wounds of war have not yet healed. And for some, the longed-for peace has come too late. Um, so yeah, as I say, good stuff. Hello, so I have three books to wrap up for you today. Uh, the first two are by Keith Terry. They are The Debris Inside My Mind and More Debris Inside My Mind. So these are two poetry collections. Keith Terry's actually uh, the father, I think, of somebody I went to school with. I'm just going to pick one of his poems out and read it out to you. Here we go, this one will do. Uh, so this is Life's a Long Song. Life's a long song, said Jethro Tull, and he was right all along. Our lives are a myriad of pathways, capably conveyed in song. Our childhood days are nursery rhymes, uplifting, unworried, carefree. Our teenage years push boundaries at times, when you know everything and everything's free. Those become the slipknot years, parent advisory on CD cases, screamed lyrics assault our wired up ears, corn with a K and white faces. We don't want a job, no need to learn, life's a long song with a drink. Our lives turn inward, no concerns, in fact no need to think. Then responsibility with years arrives, moody blues come with age, subtler rock reflects our lives, melody replaces rage. The volume often reduces, that's not to say the past was wrong, I can see clearly now producers, life's a long song. We move on toward the adult years, births and marriage and loss, laughter and tears for souvenirs, responsibilities and jobs. Dancing in the dark in pubs, late nights and revelry, becomes coffee bars and knitting clubs and our sports now on TV. Hospital visits more frequent, stairway to heaven comes along. As we live beyond help and treatment, remember that life's a long song. So yeah, uh, Keith used to be a policeman before he had to retire due to injury. A lot of his poems are about life in the police force and things like there's a poem about um, like an arms training exercise and that kind of thing. I'm not really a fan of rhyming poetry. Um, but you know, he, he does it pretty well. Um, I would say this does very much come across as like indie poetry. I don't think he ever expects to become Poet Laureate or anything like that, but it's pretty good for what it is. Um, he's also used it as a kind of like self-therapy, which I think is very cool as well. Um, and I've definitely read, I've read worse poetry, I've read better poetry. Um, but overall, pretty good. Uh, I gave them both probably a 3.5 out of 5. I think more debris inside my mind was the favourite of the two. Um, possibly just because he'd grown a little bit as a poet in between the first and the second book as well. Um, and yeah, as I say, pretty glad I read them. Uh, and then I read The Mask by Elizabeth Horan. So this is published by The Broken Spine. This was sent to me by Isabel Kenyon of Fly on the Wall Poetry. The concept here, basically, Horan writes a bunch of poems uh, inspired by Frida Kahlo. There's a postcard and stuff inside it that have just fallen out. Um, now, I've enjoyed uh, Horan's stuff in the past, but this one I wasn't so much a fan of. Um, I think, for me, it just came across a bit too much as though she was putting words in Kahlo's mouth. And obviously, Frida Kahlo is dead, so it was just a little bit strange to me. I, I kind of found it hard to reconcile with that. Um, like, if she'd been alive, I would have been a bit more receptive to it I think because obviously then she could you know she's alive she can make her own <laughs> come back to it or whatever or say that she does agree doesn't agree I've just noticed that there's a window over there that's wide open and it's really cold today I don't know why they're doing that that's very odd anyway um yeah so I, I just don't think it was really for me I think you'd enjoy it a lot more I mean, there was also a lot of Spanish in it. I don't, I don't speak any Spanish, so if it had been French or German, I think I would have enjoyed it more. Um, although, obviously, then it wouldn't have been Frida Kahlo. So I think if you're a Kahlo fan, or if you speak Spanish, you might get some more out of this. Uh, that's not to say I'm not a Kahlo fan. I, I, this is the other thing, is I think her, art, her artwork's great. I've never, like, read any of Kahlo's words or anything like that. Um, but I guess I'm just a, I just sort of have a passing acquaintanceship with her work. I also said in my vlog, I think, when I was talking about this, I have a, an artist friend who has done a piece of art which is based on one of Frida Kahlo's self-portraits. But I think in that, she made the art her own enough that it didn't feel as though she was trying to say, this is what um, Kahlo would have made. Whereas this felt as though Horan was saying, this is what Kahlo was trying to say. And I don't know if anybody is qualified to do that other than Carlo herself so I don't know um, I gave it like a pretty weak three out of five don't let that put you off though if it sounds like your kind of thing check it out 
Hi right guys, just the one book to wrap up for you today, and that is House Atreides by Brian Herbert and Kevin J. Anderson. So this is the first of the sort of continuation of Dune that, um, that these two work on after Frank Herbert's death. It's actually a prequel. Um, I really enjoyed it. I gave this a strong four out of five. Um, the reason being, you get to see a lot of really cool characters. I think like Duke Leto in this, he was more interesting than, than his son Paul ever was. Um, and actually more interesting than his grandson, the uh, tyrant uh, Leto. Uh, we get the young um, Duncan Idaho in this and we kind of learn a bit more about him. It just really does an interesting job of like setting up why the Dune universe was like it was at the start of the first book. Um, but also it was just a gripping story in and of itself. Now it is like 680 pages of fairly small print. So it took me probably about a week or so to go through this. But I'm definitely glad that I read it. And I'm now excited to be reading more of the, um, you know, continuation of the Dune series. I'd heard they weren't very good, but this is definitely a good sign. So um, bring on the next one. Hello, everybody. Okay, I have a lot of books to wrap up for you today. Um, we're going to go through the uh, Mr. Men books that I've been reading. So um, all of these, we're just going to give them a blanket 3.5 out of 5. Some of them were 4 out of 5. Um, but most were 3.5. I've mostly just been reading these because I, I read a few of these when I was a kid, but th it was one of those series I always wanted to get to. Um, and we never did get them, so I only read a few of the books. So it's been nice to kind of go through these in bulk. So uh, we have Roger Hargreaves, Little Miss Christmas. Uh, they're all Roger Hargreaves, in fact. Little Miss Shy, A Christmas Carol. This one was quite fun because it was obviously a, a Dickens sort of parody. Um, but with all of the kind of familiar Mr. Men characters in it um, and like playing to their strengths and stuff, it was good. Um, then we have Mr. Cool, Mr. Clumsy, that's me, Mr. Rush, that's also me. The Night Before Christmas, I would still credit this as Roger Hargreaves, but I believe it was actually written and illustrated by Adam Hargreaves, his son, I assume, but it's still very sort of true to form. Mr. Grumble. Mr. Rude, Little Miss Sunshine, and Mr. Topsy Turvy. So as I say, all of those are mostly 3.5s out of 5. Um, and then I read uh, another 3.5 out of 5, The Road to Oz by L. Frank Baum. So um, as you guys know, I have been reading the Oz books as Buddy Reads with Joel Swagman here on YouTube. I want to say this is number 5, but I'm not sure. It might be number 6. I'm kind of losing track. Um, and this was the first one where it just felt as though he was running out of ideas a little bit, you know. Um, wasn't particularly good. And that's a shame because up to this point I've really enjoyed this series. And um, I'm now starting to worry that I'm not going to enjoy the remainder of the books, you know. So hopefully the next book picks up from this. Um, I guess the main problem with this is the entire plot, the, you know, Dorothy and some new friends that she makes are all off to go and see Ozma in Oz. Um, and so it's kind of like a road trip. They're just going along the road to Oz. And all the time I'm there just like she could just give the signal to Oz and she could, then Oz could use the magic belt and summon them instantly. So, I don't know. There wasn't like so much of a sense of purpose to this. Um, and not that there has particularly been in the others, but I guess the others, the thing was, is that they had a lot of like really bonkers storylines that kept me kind of interested. Whereas this actually had quite a tame storyline and not much else going on as well. So, hey ho. Alrighty, so a few more books to wrap up for you. We have Predictive Medicine, Artificial Intelligence and its Impact on Healthcare Business Strategy by Emmanuel Fombu, MD, MBA. Um, this doesn't really count as a book that I've read because I haven't read it because I wrote this book. I ghost wrote it for a client um, and I finally got my copy of it. So I will be doing a little review where I talk about it a little bit more. Um, but yes, I mean 3.5 out of 5 I guess. I'll give it my default rating and then that seems fair, right? Um, but yeah, good to get this and to add it to my shelves. And then we have some more of the Mr. Men books. Again, these are all either 3.5s or 4s out of 5. So we have Little Miss Twins, Little Miss Whoops. Um, she is the sister of Mr. Bump, who was always my favourite. So this one is a 4 out of 5, because Mr. Bump uh, shows up in it. Mr. Tickle and the Dragon, another 4 out of 5, actually did like this one. Uh, Adventures with Pirates. Mr. Noisy, that's me, Mr. Forgetful, and Little Miss Tidy, definitely not me. Lots to talk about. Uh, we have some more of the five plays. So we have Uncle Vanya, probably the darkest of all of the plays, I would say, in this. 
uh, Three Sisters, uh, it was alright, quite short, and The Cherry Orchard, um, which kind of tied a lot of the other themes together, um, but I still think Ivanov was my favourite, so I gave those other three plays 3.5 out of 5 each. The overall collection is a 4 out of 5, but a weak 4 out of 5. Full review will be coming soon. Um, there's not much much more to say about it really. I was expecting it to blow my mind a little bit more than it did, but I think really I probably would have got more out of it if I'd read all of the plays individually with a bit of a space between, because a lot of them are very thematically similar. I mean, like suicide runs throughout this. Um, it seemed like in all of them the characters were talking about moving to Moscow and stuff, so it kind of felt a bit like reading the same play five times but with little variants. This also might be why I enjoyed even of the most, because it was the first in the collection. But I'm glad to say that I've read them at least. And then, we just have a buttload of these. All these Mr. Men books, mate. I, I've now finished reading through the stack of them though, so there is that. So we have, and we'll just go through them all. They're all 3.5 out of 5 unless I say otherwise. Little Miss Scary, Little Miss Trouble, Little Miss Lucky, Mr. Christmas. Um, this is the one that I gave a 3 out of 5 to because for some reason this was written in first person and all of the others are in uh, third person. So it was very jarring because of that, you know. Little Miss Fun, Mr. Grumpy, Mr. Birthday, Mr. Small, A Big Day Out. Mr. Mean, Little Miss Trouble and the Mermaid, Little Miss Brainy, Mr. Worry, Mr. Messy, relatable, probably four out of five for that. Four out of five for this as well, Mr. Bump and the Knight, um, mainly because Mr. Bump is my favorite Mr. Man. And uh, I also enjoy knights and chivalry and all of that stuff as well. Um, and I like the kind of pun of uh, Bump in the Knight as well, you know. Mr. Jelly and the Pirates, Little Miss Birthday, Mr. Snow, Little Miss Late, Little Miss Stubborn, Little Miss Giggles, Little Miss Naughty and the Good Fairy, Mr. Perfect, Mr. Mischief, oh bollocks, they all fell, Mr. Nobody, Little Miss Naughty, Little Miss Wise, Mr. Slow, Mr. Happy, and Mr. Silly. So yeah, those are all now tipped off. And that's all I have to uh, report to you for now. Hello, I'm going freehand because I don't know where my tripod is. Uh, I'm still unpacking from going to visit my mum. But it is the end of another month, so as always, thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to let me know in the comments what books you read in November. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit that subscribe button for more, and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.